So I'm starting to paint in some of the details around the eye. It's important to really look for the shapes that you're seeing, compare and contrast. It's also important that you come in and get the little light reflections that you see on the eyelid, in the iris, in the pupil. If you do not do this, the person will look very flat and not lifelike. Remember that you are drawing an eye socket, which is a hole in the skull that has a ball that is wet. And so you're going to see light reflections in that wet surface of the eyeball. And remember that it's round, so you're going to see a lot of shading. Around the nose, it's important that you look for those shapes and start to do this around the entire face. You're looking for a lot of small shapes. You're going to do a lot of mixing and getting different colors, and it's okay to continuously bring in a little bit of different colors into different areas. Make sure to continuously bring in more layers of white. You see I'm adding a little bit more of the light reflections. And even those like white areas in the face. So I initially chunked them in, but at this point I may start to bring in more small shapes and kind of continuously layer and work them back in. So if I need to lighten something up a little bit more, I can do that. If I need to darken something a little bit more, I can bring in those darker areas and then continue to blend them with a clean dry brush. You're gonna, so you're still gonna be wiping clean your brush, often using paper towel. And some of the shapes that you might bring in are kind of soft, and some of them are going to be darker. I'm still mixing up a lot of different colors. So I'm using several colors in each area. And continue to work back into those lightest areas, and then evenly with your medium values. So this takes a lot of time with a face because you have to think that it's not smooth. You have all these different values because of the bone structure and the muscle structure and the little fat pockets that you see on a, on a face. I'm starting to also mix in a little bit of oranges and reds into this skin tone because I want a little bit more of like a warm, I feel like he's a little bit too cool right now and so I can work that into it and blend it in and it will warm that up a little bit. Even though I kind of like the purple undertones, I want to definitely bring in a little bit more orange and red to warm his skin tone up. And I'm continuously looking for getting the values right. This is a long process of working all of these shapes in. Notice I just laid in more white that I'll blend in. I'm bringing a little bit of that pink. And as I do this and build this up, it's starting to look more like him, but it's also starting to feel more like him because it gives it more of like that 3D look. You can see, especially around 
the eye sockets. There's a lot of darks. And I'm kind of building that up and blending this in. So I'm still not done with this face. It's going to still take quite a bit of refining, but I'm starting to get there. And this is kind of your first uh, initial phase. And just continue to blend. And continue to smooth and continue to look for other colors that need to be brought into this skin tone. So you might see that certain areas need more browns, you might see that certain areas need more white, you might see that certain areas need more reds or oranges. And remember to smooth, but not over smooth. And continue to build it up. 